Hey guys, this is uh, this is me. This is my first video on YouTube, and I'm here to talk to you about video game. Good video game, but some people don't think it's a good video game for some reason. Now, you know, reviewers, they try to tell us whether we should buy a game or not, and most of the time they're right. They are wrong on a few occasions, and I'm about to talk to you about one thing. I mean, like, uh, now opinions, some disagree, some don't, you know, we all have our separate opinions. But there is this one game where everyone keeps panning for some odd reason. That game, Cruising USA for the Nintendo 64. Now, if you don't know about this game, here's the history. Okay, 1994, Nintendo, Midway, and Williams decided to make a 3D racer for the arcade. Now, this was actually a good racer because it was actually kind of revolutionary for its day because it, it featured three, full 3D graphics, um, it, and it, took, it featured a novelty chair where you sat down and you have all your controls right there. You know, you got the shift stick, you got the gas and the, the brakes, and you even got three camera angles, which was actually pretty revolutionary for the time because just the idea of switching views was new and exciting. And, I mean, it's no, certainly no camera from, like, Mario 64 where you get to, like, control everything, but it was still pretty good for a racing game, you know? But for, now, it was supposed to come to our home in 1995, only on Nintendo Ultra 64. That's exactly what it said. Um, but, as you know, the Nintendo Ultra 64 got delayed for one year, and they became the Nintendo 64, which I actually have. Give me a minute. Here it is. The Nintendo 64, well, this is a Pikachu one, and you got Super Smash Brothers, good game. And, well, when it came out, Cruising USA actually came out the Christmas holiday of 1996, and everyone panned the hell out of it. Because apparently it was too old, it was a two-year-old game. So, how come this game got panned? Well, to be honest, a lot of people, even though the reviewers say that it doesn't, it's not a good game, you shouldn't buy it, I still think it's a good game. I mean, it's certainly no masterpiece, but... I'm here to tell you, I'm going to review the game, so without further ado, let's check it out. There it is. I'm going to try to play this while recording, so this, just bear with me, okay? Okay, hold on. Connect classic controller over to the player one. Damn it. Okay, we're back. Here it is, developed by Wombs Entertainment. Okay, I will say one thing, the graphics look like crap. I mean, seriously, the N64 is better than this. Okay, let's see. You got your rotating car. Look, I can move the tires. Now we start with the actual gameplay. Okay. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the deal. This game, we're gonna cruise the USA. We're gonna start a new race, just for the sake of this review. You got two options. You got automatic, which is uh, you don't have to do shifts. Manual, you do have to do shifts. Okay. You choose your car. Now, before I like would continue, uh... okay. If you're gonna plan to, uh, to buy this game for the virtual console, you're gonna need to know the controls. Now, you can change the controls, but the default controls are a little awkward. Obviously, use the control stick to move your car. The control pad does the same thing, which uh, you can't do in Mario Kart. I know that. But you're probably thinking A is accelerate, right? But no, it's not actually. That would be the L button. It's a little awkward, but you get used to it. Oh crap. Accidentally started the game. Hot chick. Enjoy it. You also use the A button to control the camera options, which cycles to run, which is the inside of the car, which is kind of gives you a realistic roller coaster kind of feel. Then there's the spit high cam, which is kind of like in um, games like Pole Position. And then you got the close-up view, which is basically the high view, only closer up. And then you got the B button, which I believe toggles the sound. You can toggle music in this game. Although many people say the music isn't that good, but you can always like turn the volume down and listen to your iPod, which I sometimes do. And I believe the R button is the break. Mm, pretty good. I mean, it's actually kind of a nice setup. You got the control pad and the uh, uh, L-stick all on one side. You really only need to play with one hand on a GameCube controller. Um, X and Y are C buttons for cheat codes. And the C button right, I believe, toggles the heads-up heads display, 
which is um, like for like see like all this stuff like you can get rid of like the elapsed time the first place stuff all that stuff you can get rid of um, I so you're driving around the road the object of the game obviously get first place and you gotta do this for a few times because you gotta get first place in every race in order to continue on okay there we go this is my camera angle right here checkpoint See, the gameplay is actually a little shallow, but that's not necessarily, necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it is a fun game. Another cool thing about this game is the traffic. I mean, that's your main enemy there. You gotta dodge traffic. See, you crash into cars and stuff. That's the game's chaos factor, proving that you don't need really cheap, uh, really cheap things like explosive purple spike shells that completely screw over the first place winner, and then, uh, but but doesn't it help you any better? just to have a chaos factor. I mean, don't get me wrong, Mario Kart kicks ass, but I'm just saying, that item needs to go. Um, you just drive along, you know. This is actually a nice, like, casual game. Like, a person who has barely played a video game in their life, they'll have a lot of fun with this. It's, like I said, you don't even need to hold, I need to hold the controller with two hands in order to play this game. And there you go, driving down the road, driving down the road, destroying stuff, driving down the road, driving down the road, driving down the road. Nintendo sign, that means you're close to the finish line. And to be honest with you, okay, here we go. And now we must enjoy the hot chick. Now in the original arcade version, she had a bikini on, but Nintendo apparently has no balls, so they decided to get rid of put her shirt on her. I mean, that kind of stinks, right? I mean, if you're like a teenage guy or a college student, then you're not going to want to see that. Okay, we move on to this course. San Francisco. Enjoy it. Now this actually has like this techno beat. There's this song called um, How Special. It's got a sweet techno beat. It's actually... One, a good translation from the arcade version, actually better than the arcade version in my opinion. I mean, I mean, come on, is it really, I mean, I can understand, like, it's n certainly no, like, Gran Turismo or uh, Project Gotham Racing, which I've never played in my life because I've never owned a PS2 or Xbox, but, but come on, just because the game's not perfect doesn't mean you have to give it a one star on VC reviews or a six point, oh, you know, on GameStop or a four point oh, on IGN. No, you don't have to do that, you can just... See? Chaos Factor. I mean, I got to win. Yes. Okay, here's a tunnel. Okay, now the, the reviews keep saying there are slowdowns. Yeah, there are slowdowns, but they don't completely butcher the gameplay. You can still, like, see I'm going down a nice, narrow tunnel trying to get to second place. First place, actually. This game is actually very demanding. Like, you got it. Like, it keeps you going. It's difficult to just keep first place sometimes. Like, they say that, like, the AI is, like, rubber band crazy. I mean, like, how is that a bad thing? I mean, so what? They'll, you know, they'll, they do say, you know, at least they're not really stupid. Like, I've seen them, like, get out of the way of traffic, at least. I mean, they'll zoom up to you sometimes, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, it keeps you going. It makes you th think, I, okay, I'm not going to crash this time. It's, like, not, like, sometimes where you think, okay, I crashed once. I, it, yeah, I crashed once, like, so, so far, what? I'm, like, oh. But way ahead of everyone else, like, I I'm just gonna keep going, not even try anymore. It, it doesn't have that, it basically cuts out the whole tortoise hair thing, it, focus on it. it keep, you gotta keep going, you can't stop, you gotta just keep on going. Keeps going faster, motherfucker. Uh, okay, just driving, just driving. They say the control's a little, like, too responsive, but... You know, it's not too bad, I mean, just drifting along, just driving, just driving. First place, here we go. US 101 is like the easiest track out here. Okay, this song sucks, we're gonna switch it. Tubular Surf. Okay. Roadkill Jam's okay. It sounded a lot better in the arcade with the rock guitar and stuff. How special we've heard that. Bluegrass Boogie. It's actually a pretty decent transition. Kind of reminds me of the old Rockabilly stuff. Surfari Monster got butchered in this version. It was awesome in the arcade version, but it got butchered here. 
the jumps in this game are out of control. And that's not a bad thing, it's funny. It's like sometimes they'll just bl go through the boundary and you just teleport out to the center of the road. It's kind of fun, it's kind of glitchy, but kind of funny as well. I mean, like, it's a good game. I mean, it's good for those for those boring nights where you have nothing else better to do, but you don't want to feel like, play like a thoughtful RPG that will take you like a long time to like just think through stuff through stuff. This is a kind of game that you can just pick up and play. It's so freaking simple. I mean, okay. Like that little beeping MIDI noise that you heard, that was originally a sweet ass guitar solo, but unfortunately, apparently the Nintendo 64 can't do that. Of course it can do that. I mean, if a Super NES can make incredible music, like on Donkey Kong Country and stuff, and uh, Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy, then an N64 can do just about it, the same thing. New record time. Now, with all Nintendo 64 games on VC, it's not gonna like have all the like the controller pack stuff. So you're gonna be seeing this hot time, this top score the screen a lot, which means you're gonna hear a lot of "Welcome to the Hall of Fame." I mean, it gets a little annoying. Here's something. Look, you can control the conveyor belt. It's like a useless Easter egg in this game or something. <laughs> okay, then we're moving on to probably one of the hardest courses in the game: Red Word Forest. Now let me explain more about the traffic in this game. Like, there are like the only need to explain is that there's sometimes these cars that will just swerve between the two middle two lanes. I'm guessing they're supposed to be drunk drivers or something. They could be drunk drivers or anything. They could be anything really. So you're just driving down the road. I don't think there's a horn in this game. I, I wait, there no there is not a horn in this game. So you can't like, hey, you stupid piece of crap. I'm kind of okay. Just driving down the road. Playing cruising USA. Playing cruising. Going through the forest of the trees that are redwoods. Gotta get to first place to see that hot girl's face. Gonna drive down the road and hopefully I won't. Can't think of anything that rhymes. <laughs> Yeah, see, it gets a little, like, nuts. Now, if you like games solely because of graphics, first of all, get real, get taste. And second of all, you're not going to like this game. I mean, this game has bad graphics. I'm gonna, not going to lie. It has bad graphics. I mean, like, everything is a two-dimensional shape, and when you hit it, it falls down like a cardboard cutout or something. Again, it's really awesome to see these cars crash. I mean, look at this. I'm gonna try crashing this. Oh crap! Another. There's like one bad thing about the crashes that you really never know when, like, what to expect. Usually, when you get rear-ended, you spin out. It seems kind of random sometimes, but I guess that's like. But then again, I think there's two kinds of people who like this game. There's the kind who want to win, and there's the kind who just want to crash. Like, cause a bunch of chaos on the road, mainly on the San Francisco because it has a, such a narrow path. Bottom line, Cruising USA is a good casual game. If you like casual games like this, then go ahead and pick it up. If you have a Nintendo 64, um, I would recommend you probably just go ahead and buy it used because it costs $10,000 on Wii, a virtual console, and they're no different other than one, two things. One, you have a transfer pack for times. And two, in one of the stages, there's a Hollywood sign, and for some reason in the Virtual Console version, they had to take it out. I give Cruising USA for the Nintendo 64 a 7 out of 10. So, tune in next time on my reviews. Okay, like, imagine if you have a friend over who's never held a controller in their life. It's like... They probably think that, like, this kind of entertainment is, like, really confusing. Like, I think some of the entertainment is confusing. I can't play Halo 3. I can't play it. Another thing, game I can't play is Call of Duty 3. I'm dead serious. This is how much I suck at it. I can't get past the first freaking level. I mean, I can get past, like, the area where you're, like, already, like, in the base and you're just throwing stuff, like, training. But when it comes to the actual, like, war level, then I can't beat it. I just can't. 
I mean, like, the only... Okay. But this game, it's like, hey, you, you want to play this game? And it's like, okay. Like, if they want to play a racing game and they like cars, and this is it. You just play a game. R button, control stick, good. Now, what else... Now, wow, why else should you buy this game? Um, well... It's got some good things, like... It's, it's a cult classic on the Nintendo 64. Many pe people consider that. And guess what? It even... Fuck. I don't know what to say. This game is horrible! You must never buy! <laughs>